Sales revenue maximization is another concept that we have to learn. It is introduced by William J. Baumol. Usually, firms try to maximize their profit. This is another way of maximization of revenue. But this is not through profit maximization, but by sales revenue maximization. So, we can say that William J. Baumol suggested sales revenue maximization as an alternative goal to profit maximization. While making his hypothesis, he made several justification of why sales maximization is important to a firm. In modern day firms, we can see that management and ownership are different. They are segregated. So the interest of the management and interest of the owners are different. Owners wish to increase their profit, that is the major shareholders. In the case of management, they wish to increase their benefits. So, so, so what we can see is, managers will pursue their own personal goals and personal utility and they may deviate from profit maximization. So, we need to equalize these two interests. So, the most plausible goal of managers will be the sales maximization. Beaumont made this observations out of his experience as a consultant to large firms. So, there is evidence that salaries and other perks which are given to top managers increase out of the sales maximization. Banks and other financial institutions who second every activities of firms are interested in their market performance and that is analyzed through increase in sales revenue. The problems of employees can easily be solved when there is a high market performance and that is through sales revenue maximization. And in order to have a stability, it is always good to have an increased sales revenue. Beaumont, on his way to present the theory, represents two basic models. The first is a static single period model. The second is a multi-period dynamic model of growth of sales revenue maximization. Each of these two versions are having two additional versions. That is one without advertising and the other one with advertising. So there are two basic models, static single period model and the second one is a multi-period dynamic model of growth of sales revenue maximization. Each of these two models are having two different versions that is with advertisement and without advertisement. So this is a peculiarity of uh, Bobo's model. So we have to understand about advertisement and those activities without advertisement. So we can see static model as well as dynamic model. He also tries to explain the cases of single period model and multi product model, single product model and multi product model. Now we shall see the basic assumptions of static models. Mainly we can see that there is a time horizon that is single period. We try to explain using the traditional U shaped curves when we speak about total cost and total revenue. Then the minimum profit constraint is exogenously determined. It is exogenously determined because the demands and expectations of shareholders and banks, financial institutions and the like. So the interested parties decide the level of profits. So that act as a constraint. It, firms will have to surpass this level and each time the firm tries to maximize their total sales revenue. Now we shall go on to the first model that is single period model without advertisement. So we are going to deal with single product model without advertisement. So for that we are using the diagram TR and TC curves we can see that X axis and Y axis clearly given. It is a U shaped curve or the traditional U shaped models are present. The total cost curve is TC and total revenue curves TR. So the sales revenue that is TR is at its maximum level that is at the highest point of TR. Here price elasticity of demand is unity. The slope of the TR curve is 
equal to 0. This is the highest point. And we can also see that the sales revenue will be maximized or not. This is the question. So whether this maximum sales revenue will be realized or not depends upon the level of minimum acceptable level of profit. So this minimum acceptable level of profit is going to act as a constraint to the activity of the firm. If the firm were a profit maximizer, what will it do? It will produce a level of output x by m. Now Baumol's model speaks about sales maximizer. It has to earn a minimum level of profit at the same time. So sales maximization is one of the goal, but it will have to satisfy the needs of the shareholders. That is a minimum acceptable level of profit is there and it has to gain up a minimum acceptable level of profit which act as a constraint. If minimum acceptable level of profit, for example, if it is pi 1, the firm will produce the level of output XSM. So this maximizes its sales revenue. With the level of output XSM that we can see in the diagram, the firm earns a profit of pi SM. So this pi SM which is greater than the minimum required to save the stakeholders or stockholders interest. So these circumstances we say that the minimum profit constraint is not operative. If minimum acceptable profit is pi 2, the firm will not be able to attain the maximum sales revenue because the profit constraint is operative. And the firm will produce excess unit of output. It is not EXC, ESS, excess, but it is XS units of output which are less than at the level of XSM. So that means there are two types of equilibria that is possible. The first one is in which the profit constraint provides no effective barrier to sales maximization. That is XSM units of output with a minimum acceptable profit of pi 1. And the second equilibrium that is possible is the one in which it does that is excess unit of output with a minimum acceptable profit of pi 2. So the firm is able to pursue an independent price policy that is set to its price so as to achieve its goal of sales maximization. So the sales maximizer will produce a higher level of output as compared to the profit maximizer that is one of the inferences that we can find. Profit maximizer, the price of the profit maximizer will be higher than the price of the sales maximizer. So the sales maximizer will sell at a price lower than the profit maximizer. Now we shall see some additional points. For example, the imposition of fixed costs, lump sum tax or even a specific tax. We have already seen that the sales maximizer will sell at a lower price than the profit maximizer. So he will earn a lower profit than the profit maximizer. Now when fixed costs are imposed, this will affect the equilibrium of the sales maximizer. He will reduce his level of output that we can see in the diagram and increase his price since the increase in fixed cost shift the total profit curves downwards. That is shown by pi 1 the dotted inverted U shaped curve. Subject to the profit constraint the sales maximizer will pass the increase in cost to the customers. So the burden will be transferred to whom the customers by charging a higher price. So that we can see from the diagram. So in the case when we compare it with traditional hypothesis, a profit maximizer will not change his equilibrium position in the short run. Baumol claims that the firms in real world do in fact change their output and price whenever there is a change in overhead cost. So he says that the sales maximization hypothesis has a better predictive performance than the traditional profit maximization hypothesis. Now the second case is imposition of lump sum tax that will also have a similar effect. If the firm is a profit maximizer, the imposition of lump sum tax will not affect the price and output in the short run. 
what do he do the profit maximizer will bear the whole burden of the lump sum tax if the firm is a sales maximizer he has a slightly different decision lump sum tax will shift the total profit curve downwards and given the profit constraint the firm will be led to cut its level of output and increase its price thus passing on all the burden to the consumers so firms do shift their tax burden to the buyers another case is specific tax that is per unit of output there will be a certain amount of tax this will also shift the profit curve downwards the sales maximizer will reduce his output and will raise his price passing the tax to the buyers at least partly a similar analysis holds true in the case of changes in variable cost both the sales maximizer and profit maximizer will raise their price and reduce their output the reduction in output however and the increase in price will be more accentuated for the sales maximizer so this is the analysis and inferences from the first model now we have to move on to the second model that is a single product model with advertising so this is also the case of single product but here we have an additional cost that is advertisement so we have to first see the assumptions of the model so the goal of the firm that is the first assumption no doubt it is to maximize the sale there is a minimum profit constraint and the profit level is exogenously determined so the sales revenue will be maximized which will be subject to the minimum profit constraint and the profit level will be exogenously determined we introduce the concept of advertisement which is a major instrument of the firm in real world what happens is a non price competition and thus advertisement is playing a very crucial role so when advertisement expenditure is high usually the sales revenue increases this is what bomor suggests and the production cost are independent of advertising even if it is unrealistic assumption he uses this assumptions and tries to simplify it so the firm in an oligopolistic market he will prefer to increase its sales by advertisement rather than cut in price so while the physical volume is increased by a cut in price it may not increase the sales revenue because it depends upon the kind of demand its elasticity and inelasticity but when advertisement is introduced bomor clearly says that it will definitely increases the sales revenue the marginal revenue of advertisement is assumed to be positive because of this conclusion so when advertisement is introduced in the model while we explain it it is not possible to operate or find an equilibrium where the profit constraint is not operating while when there is price competition alone it is possible to reach an equilibrium that is maximum of sales here the equilibrium means maximization of sales that is the goal of the firm where profit is no, uh, not operating with non price competition into the activity unconstrained equilibrium is not possible so the minimum profit constraint is always operative when advertising is introduced in the model now to explain the model we are going to use a diagram so the sales maximizer will normally have higher advertising expenditure than a profit maximizer so in the case advertising cannot be less than the sales maximizing model so for that for explaining the concept bomol is using a diagram so we are having total revenue and total cost x axis and y axis clearly presented advertisement cost is also a part of the total cost we have the profit constraint pi which is operative 45 degree line is also used 
cost total revenue profits are measured on the vertical axis production cost which is independent of the level of advertisement it is shown by the t seeker so if these two costs are added the advertisement cost and the total cost both are added we will get the entire cost or the entire outlay in the firm so when we subtract the total cost from the total revenue at each level of output we obtain the total profit curve pi the interrelationship between output and advertisement is positive and marginal revenue always permit to use advertisement and that will try to increase the sales the advertisement amount or cost or outlay or expenditure used by the sales maximizer as per the diagram it is oas and the sales maximizer that is higher than the profit maximizer that is oa pi so advertisement is measured in the x axis usually output comes over there here it is advertisement and the profit constraint pi is operative at equilibrium level so for the advertising cost for the firm having advertising cost it is as and for the profit maximizer it is only a pi so the validity of the model rests on the crucial assumption that advertising always increases sales revenue so the entrepreneur always believe that advertisement increases his profits and that is why he is trying to use advertisement Bomol does not examine explicitly the interrelationship between advertising price cost of production and level of output so if the total production costs are independent of advertising bomol assumes it implies that total output x will remain constant after advertising has taken place consequently an increase in sales revenue r that is given x can be attained only if the price is raised so then in the given diagram cost revenue and profit is measured in the vertical axis and advertisement the level of profit etc shown on the x axis there is a output cost that is cc and the advertisement cost when these two are added we get the total cost when we subtract total cost from the total revenue we get the total profit that is the pi curve at each level howman and de bartolo have presented a model which they call generalized bomol model here they use the cost curves and also the revenue curves so in order to find the equilibrium what they do is the cost curves and the revenue curves are superimposed in order to get tc is equal to tr curve so this is what howman and de bartolo called the tc is equal to tr curve so in order to find the equilibrium of the firm we superimpose these two curves and join the points of intersection of total cost and total revenue curves corresponding to the same amount of advertising expenditure